We are about to start the journey of this project. This is a super rare Super Impreza Type R. So we've arrived at Engine Tuner. These are the guys who are going to restore the Subaru for us. So as you can see, they are Subaru specialists. They are everywhere. So what they do is they have this shop, which is basically the engine shop with the mechanical, engine builds, dyno. We'll show you that shortly. And they have another shop for bodywork. So there's our Subaru. Just a quick walk up here. This is the one that we saw at 10 of the best. I think it's the world's most powerfulest EJ21. Makes just short of a thousand. Lovely Irish turbo. But as you can see, these guys are the Subaru specialists. Hence, us bringing the car down. So let me introduce the car. I'm really going to have to think now because I don't want to destroy it and there's going to be a million comments if I get it wrong. To my knowledge of looking at the Subaru book and build sheet, this is classed as the rarest two-door Subaru they ever produced. Even more rarer than the 22 B that everyone goes on about. This is a version 4 WRX V Limited Type R. And what makes it rare is on this year they had to make a thousand to homologate them for rallying. Halfway through the year, the FIA changed the rules, they stopped. So this is basically a 300 horsepower factory, EJ20, roof vent, locked LSDs, front rear center, all that type of thing. It does have the V Limited plaque when I get inside and I get it off our show you that but to give you an idea the 22b they made 424 these they made 344 the only other model which is rarer than this one on the list we've seen in the uh the subaru book is called something like it was a five door and it was like the uh it was called like the colin mccree edition and they made 300 of them they also did another one which is on gran turismo something like an s301 or something like that i think that was 500 but at 344 to our knowledge i'm sure there'll be a lot of comments this is supposed to be the rarest two-door model they ever built and they never planned on it hence we're struggling to find information on it basically this is here for full restoration full paint all body restored everything else because as you can see with the bonnet starting to get a bit of lack appeal and with these increasing in value it's better sometimes than having money in the bank to restore an old classic car so little things which are rare which you obviously pick up on is the factory roof vent is there and as you can see all factory installed, all factory. Now, the lads have just told me this is off a of version 5 control panel. Don't know what's going on there. But as you can see, there is the badge. 133 of 1,000. But it was stopped halfway through, as I said, and they made 344. Other little things that I pick up on is, I think these are going to, it all goes back to factory. The nice little things on the seats, I'm going to guess now looking at it, is for the three victories, 95, 96, 97. So that's basically the car. Let's get inside and let me show you some some basically what we are expecting the car to come out like when i say subaru specialists all the factory subaru tools but if anyone who watches like officially gassed and other things on on youtube will know this car this is rob the owner's subaru which is a beautiful example of a three door makes a lot of horsepower that's not what we're after but as for the body wise this is basically what we're after a super clean super tidy factory looking classic subaru and obviously you've seen outside nice little Renault 5 being worked on and as i say these guys are the subaru specialists and this is why we've brought it to them you can do as much or as little even to the point of if you wanted it, the body restored and you wanted a thousand horsepower these guys can do that this has been a five hour drive for me but you have to travel when you want a specialist it is early doors i was up at five o'clock to get down here come out for the drive out with engine tuner amazing set of guys they basically said anytime in the area pop past and yeah i was two hours away but it's the closest i'm ever going to be because they're right down on the south coast so luckily for me the weekend i'm down here they're on a drive out with all the subaru guys and i'm looking forward to seeing what's going on what subarus they tune seeing what old school cars they tune because i've had a quick look round. there's a lot to see a lot to do looking forward to a drive around the national park i think it's dartford i think it is so let's dive in and let's see how the day pans out so obviously walking into the workshop you're greeted by i think it's a 750 brake horsepower skyline this is rob the owners that's an 840 horsepower classic subaru this thing is an evil i think it's a 6rs but look 
at how clean this thing is being fully restored as i say these they are subaru specialists if anyone watched the 10 the best video will notice this car this is the one that blew uh, at the nitrous backfire unfortunately i think it's got a bit of a leak down on the cylinder heads they're going to strip it down rebuild it and again back out racing again just walking through all your subarus again lovely estate going big power in the future i've heard it's going for you know six 600 horsepower plus but Renault 5 GT Turbo this is supposed to be 400 horsepower with nitrous load of fancy electronic uh, parts on it interesting to see an old school Renault 5 and a Subaru specialist but these guys do absolutely everything from building the cars mapping the cars fabrication you name it and then because this company has been going for so long they're very well known for the old classics they still do the old Ford so this is a ZVH bottom end I think it's a 2.1 the usual specs you do with the Irish turbos Subarus everywhere and then if you walk through everything from that's the fab room walk through into the back this is a full engineering shop so this is basically everything that needs engineering to build the engines so all the super engines so if you look they are absolutely everywhere they do everything from you know your boring your grinding your honing till until you actually go into the clean room and the clean room is to build the engines and look at the finished article. If anyone is restoring a Subaru, you cannot get much cleaner than this. How stunningly clean is this rebuilt engine? Every bracket's been cleaned, all been zinc plated, painted. So if you're restoring a Subaru, this is the attention to detail these guys go into. First time I've come, very welcoming. I'll, have a, I'll just sneak through this other room to have a quick show in here. And in here, the lights have been turned off, but in here is the dyno cell. Everything under one roof, which is, is quite rare these days. There's not many places that do everything. Normally, they farm stuff out. They might do just the tuning. Someone else does the engine building. But engine tuners, because they've been going for so long, they have been doing everything in-house. He was 83, I think he started. And the owner, who's now in his 70s, has kind of passed the torch on to a gentleman called Rob. But the main mapping guy is still the original owner's son, Martin, who actually owns the drag car from 10 of the Best. So let's go outside, let's see who's turning up, and let's see how this day pans out. Wow. So it turns out this is engine tuners. It's called Driver Club. I only just found this out because I've just been invited. This is where basically the full community of the customers of Engine Tuner all meet up once a month, go out for a drive, talk, chat, basically make a community. Nowadays, there's not a lot of that with shops. It's normally all money orientated, but engine tuners seem to be very kind of group family orientated. The cars are just arriving because we've had a drive out, but look at the scenery of where we come. You can pick anywhere or picturesque. So let's go walk around, let's see what cars are here, and let's watch the other cars arrive. I think everyone's got a soft spot for an old Supra. I don't know what it is about them. I think the Fast and Furious era has brought them all into, into light, let's say, and into the front of a lot more people. I think that's why the popularity grew massively with them. But they are a stunning car. And what was frightening, I can remember these where they were sub 10 grand for a manual twin turbo one. Sub 10 grand, you'd be lucky to buy an absolute rock box nowadays. And then over here, the wagon. Now, I prefer the wagons for some reason. I think it's the fact of, I was always like the, uh, an estate fan. I had a V70 T5 estate at one point. And I think that's why I always kind of pick the estates over the normal ones. But no, this is a really, really nice example. And again, what is frightening is I remember buying one of these in green turbo UK spec for £700. I don't think you get an engine for one of these nowadays for that type of money. It just shows how much times have changed in probably 10 to 15 years. The value of these classics have gone up. So we're talking to the gentleman with a Supra. For some reason, if you look at the back, you think it'd have a massive boot. The state of this, there is no... Uh, we can make it work. Hardly any... Well, there we go. We're going to put the seats back up. There you go. Well, if you call that a seat, seat. <laughs> there's no room. Look at the height of the boot. And under here is spare wheel and tools. It's got, um, yeah, what like the hell? It's a space saver. And it's a space saver. It's not saving space, is it? <laughs> it's just got no space in the boot at all. Have, like two stairways up there. What the hell? It's actually pointless. Wow. For, for, uh... for the size of that back end, yeah. you'd think it'd have a major boot on it, but there is it's nothing. Like four hundred litre fuel tank or something. I want to explain a little bit more about this. Take the gentleman with the blue suit. They're just customers of engine tuners, but it's kind of an area where they can all meet, they can all talk about cars, they can all talk about the progression, they're bringing customers together on the principle of these group might might never have 
met or, or bumped into each other because they were just customers of engine tuner but because they do this drive out everyone's meeting everyone and everyone's talking about how they're building theirs and what they've done to develop theirs and this is kind of an example of the new school the m2 the s3 or the rs3s and it still goes back to my appreciation of the old school i can appreciate the new stuff i certainly can technology has to come on technology has to move forward but for me, a car has to have a personality. You have to have an emotional attachment to it. You have to enjoy just going out for a drive and enjoying the fun. And I, I've not seen a new car which does that. Don't get me wrong. They do the job perfectly as a car, but as something you can get an emotional attachment to and go, yeah, part of the family type of thing. You enjoy driving it. You name it. That type of enjoyment the old school cars give. Keeping the old school cars alive. So we'll sign this video off. That's just a brief introduction of one of the cars in the future. We'll see a little bit more of because obviously we're having it restored. You'll see the future progression. Been very welcome to engine tuners. The guys have got a four wheel drive dyno. So I'm pretty confident in the future we're going to answer the question of what does a twin engine car make on a four wheel drive dyno? Because these guys are helping me out to the end of the year very accommodating very knowledgeable they've been mapping cars for many many years so it'd be interesting to get on the dyno so i'll sign this one off thanks for watching and i'll see you all on the next video